St. Catherine Labre and the Miraculous Medal. Happy birthday, Alex. Happy birthday, champ. Oh, wow, an explorer kit. Thank you. Cool. Look, two walkie-talkies. There, one for you and one for me. Eagle eyes to cross-eyed vulture, over. I don't want to be a cross-eyed vulture. Oh, okay, whatever. Just listen. This evening, we're going to test out my explorer kit at the old power station. But they say that place is haunted. What's that? I think I hear a chicken. Hey, who are you calling a chicken? Didn't you ever think that all that ghost stuff is just a story they made up so no one would go there? Huh? Well, I don't know. And why don't they want anyone to go there? Haven't you ever wondered about that? Because it's dangerous? Negative. Because there's a treasure. Don't you see? Someone's hiding something there and they don't want anyone to find it. Okay, let's go. Okay, you can come too. Hi, Sister Patricia. Hi, girls. What are you reading? It's the life of Catherine Labore. She's a famous saint. Well, yes and no. I've never heard of her before. St. Catherine Labore is famous for spreading devotion to the miraculous medal. She was born in France in 1806 to a humble peasant family, and when she was only eight, her mother died. So she asked the Virgin Mary to be her mother. Catherine climbed up so she could reach a small image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary, please be my mother from now on and take care of my family. Amen. From that time on, Catherine took over all the household chores. Her family kept over 600 doves, and it was her job to feed them. When she was 14, she told her father she wanted to become a nun. Catherine, you mustn't join a convent now. I need you here at home. Besides, you're still very young. I need you to help me run this household. Very well, father. I will wait. Thank you. One night, Catherine saw an old priest in a dream. One day you will help me heal the sick. And do you know what happened? When she was 24 years old, Catherine went to visit her sister, who was a nun, and when she arrived at the convent, she saw St. Vincent de Paul. And what was so surprising about that? It was the very same priest she'd seen in her dreams. That's amazing! Isn't it? So Catherine knew that God wanted her to enter that convent, and she asked her father so many times that in the end, he let her go. It's really dark. That's what we have flashlights for, right? What if we just went home? Hey, we didn't come all this way just to turn back now. Wait for me, don't leave me all alone. What did I tell you? Take a look at this. Nothing here but cobwebs and junk. Wait, look again. This used to be the office. Look at the table. And there's a chair. And that old cabinet. We have to find the safe. I bet that's where they kept the treasure. Treasure? You're crazy. Look! It's a medal of the most blessed Virgin Mary. Wow! She's got lightning shooting out of her hands. Looks like silver. Yeah, it might be a really valuable antique metal. You see, I told you, we found a treasure. <laughs> it's just a metal. Incidentally, you boys shouldn't go anywhere near that old power station. The building isn't safe. You see, we shouldn't have gone there. Okay, I get it. So this isn't an antique metal? No, it's not. It's a miraculous metal. Miraculous? It does miracles? I told you, this metal is like Aladdin's lamp. We can ask it to do anything we want it to. <laughs> you have a very active imagination. It's just a medal to remind us that the Blessed Virgin Mary is our best intercessor. Many people have received graces and favors thanks to this medal by saying a special prayer. O oh Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to Thee. You know, I want to be famous. I'll be 
a famous journalist. Yeah, me too. Hey, I've got an idea. We'll start a school newspaper. A whole newspaper? Well, we could start by writing one page and making photocopies. Okay. We'll put the photocopies at the school entrance so everyone can read it. Wait a second, wait a second. What if no one likes it? What if we make fools of ourselves? What if everyone thinks it's a terrible newspaper? You're right, I hadn't thought of that. It would be embarrassing if it went wrong. You know, there are some writers who use pen names. When they sign their work with a made-up name? Exactly. We can make up a name and use that. Right, we can be... X. We'll sign with an X. Okay, everyone will ask who's this journalist X. It will be really cool. I'll tell you the story of how the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to St. Catherine Labouret. Did she really see our Mother Mary? She did, just you listen. One night, while St. Catherine was sleeping, a young boy of about five years of age appeared to her wearing a shining white tunic. Come to the chapel. The Blessed Virgin Mary is waiting for you. The candles lit up as they went by. Catherine was amazed. As it was half past 11 at night, the chapel door was locked, but the boy touched the door lightly and it opened. Inside, every candle was burning. Here is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our mother Mary told her about many things that were going to happen, and eventually all of them did. Do you know what I think? No, what? Well, I think the stories about the ghosts that haunt the old power station are all lies. We're going right back up there tonight. I think it's wonderful that you want to start a newsletter. We're going to write a really funny article that'll make us famous. Well, girls, that's great. But being famous isn't the most important thing in life. We have to serve others with our work, often without them knowing. In fact, St. Catherine could have been famous for her visions of the Virgin Mary, but she chose to lead a normal life within the convent. My daughter, you must forget these visions and concentrate on living a holy life. Yes, Father. But our Mother Mary has asked me to spread devotion to this medal. Very well. Since you're so determined, I'll speak to the Archbishop. And you say that she is a nun? Yes, she tells me she's received these orders directly from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, Father Aladell, you have permission to make these medals. I don't think they'll do any harm. From that time, many people began to wear this medal and receive miracles. Have you heard about the Miraculous Medal? Yes, I'm wearing one. Apparently, this devotion started with a nun who says she has visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Yes, but no one knows who she is. Even the nuns in the convent wondered which one of them had had the visions. They say it's a nun. From this convent? I don't know, perhaps. What do you think? Meanwhile, Catherine worked in the convent kitchens. She didn't want to be famous. So tell me, Father, who is this nun? I'm sorry, Your Excellency. I cannot reveal her name. It's a secret of the confessional. I understand. Let it remain so. Father Michael, how did she first see the Miraculous Medal? Well, it was like this. On the evening of November 27, 1830, while Catherine was praying, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to her within an oval frame. She was standing on a globe, wearing a white robe with a blue mantle. From her hands shone rays that fell to earth. On the upper part of the frame, Catherine saw the following words, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. The frame rotated, and she saw the letter M under a cross resting on a bar, and beneath it the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Then. The Virgin Mary told her that she should create a medal with this image. All who wore it and said the prayer would receive special protection from the Mother of God. You see? If you're wearing this medal, nothing can happen to you. We are going back to the power station tonight to investigate. Okay. 
<laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah, what a great article. I wonder who this X person is. No idea, but they write really well. Where are the boys? I saw them leaving school. They were with Nelson. They left the school at lunchtime? My dad will be so mad at them. Right, they'll be in big trouble. Look, a secret tunnel. It looks like a drain. What are you talking about? It's a secret passage. Come on. Hey, don't leave me here. Wait. Look, look. trapped down here and it's all your fault. Come on, what's wrong with you? You're forgetting what we've got. Ta-da, the miraculous meadow. Do you think it really works miracles? We just have to try, let's see. I wish, I wish that the door to this tunnel would open right now. I said now. We're really stuck now and it's all your fault. Help, somebody help us. Look, look. Nelson, find help. What are you talking about? He's a dog. He can't speak. How's he supposed to find help? Come on, let's see if we can find a way out. This tunnel has to lead somewhere. This will be our second printing. Yeah, the first was a total success. Girls, do you know where Sergio and Alex are? No, they left the school at lunchtime. I'll call Father Michael Babs. He'll know where they are. No, Thomas, they're not here. Sergio's father just called me. They're not at his house either. Hang on, hang on. I remember yesterday they said something about going to the old power station. Of course, that's it. They probably got there with the Explorer's kit we gave Alex. We'll see you there. I'm going to the power station. Holy Mother, please help us find those boys safe and sound. It's only a rat. I hate rats. I hate drains. I hate... Give me a break. It's only a rat. What if it bites me, huh? What if it bites me and I have to get an injection? I hate injections. Nelson's trying to tell us something. I bet they've gone down there. Hello! Alex! Sergio! Where does the stream come out? In the river. Then let's get going. There's no time to waste. We finished! Our second newsletter! Looks good! Do you think something's happened to the boys? I don't think so, but they're definitely going to be in tons of trouble. Hey, dude, look! I saw a light round that bend. Maybe it's the end of the tunnel. Ah! Ah! What is it? I saw a shadow at the end of the tunnel. It's the ghost. I told you this place is haunted. Sergio, is that you? Is that Thomas? Yes. Is Alex with you? Yes, Dad, I'm here. They found us! Yeah, but we're gonna be in big trouble. Well, children, as you know, every year we give a prize to the most original school project. And this year it will go to the mystery journalist X for the hilarious newspaper they've been publishing. The problem is we don't know who the mystery writer is, so we don't know who to give the prize to. Teacher, that we are the mystery writer X. No way. Remember what St. Catherine Laboure did? Hi there, girls. Sister Patricia, did St. Catherine ever tell anyone about her visions? Well, let me see. After her confessor died, she continued to hide her real identity. But they found she had a very serious illness. And before she died, she wanted to tell her mother superior everything that had happened. 
What did she say? Well, her mother superior thought it was wonderful that God had chosen such a humble and modest nun to do his work. In that case, we'll never tell anyone that we're the Mystery Writer X. Right, we'll just forget about the prize. I'll take a photo of the trophy and put it up in my room. That's good enough for me. You know, all saints have been humble people. Some of them had a motto. All glory to God. May he alone shine. Father Michael? What is it, Alex? The miraculous medal failed us. Yeah, we asked it to open a manhole cover and it didn't do it. <laughs> so you think it's a magic medal? Well, no, the medal is a sacramental that reminds us to ask for the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she helps us if we obey her son, our Lord Jesus, and also do our part. So you mean that it isn't like the genie of Aladdin's lamp? Exactly. You shouldn't have gotten yourselves in that situation. That's like asking our Mary to help you pass a test without studying first. I understand. We have to do something. Not something. We have to do our very best. Okay, I think I get it. Father Michael, have you taken a good look at the Miraculous Medal? Well, yes. Why do you ask? Because I think it's strange that some of the rays that are coming out of the Blessed Virgin Mary's hands don't reach Earth. Right, they stop halfway. Well, that's interesting because St. Catherine Labore asked the same question to our Mother Mary, and she told her, Many graces and heavenly favors are not obtained because nobody asked for them. In other words, the rays that don't reach Earth are the favors we don't receive, simply because nobody asks for them. I see. In that case, I'll ask for things, but I don't know what to ask for. Then ask for what is best for you, even if you don't know what that is. All right. You can also ask for the same things your parents ask for because they're the ones who know and love you best. Okay, I'll ask for what my mom and dad ask for. When St. Catherine died, her fame as a saint quickly spread. After St. Catherine's death, a child who was paralyzed was brought before her body, and the child was instantly cured. The child's parents had made an effort to bring him to St. Catherine's funeral, and their effort was rewarded. We too have to make an effort to be good Catholics, and then the Blessed Virgin Mary will ask her son Jesus to reward us. Do you mean that we shouldn't expect her to help us if we're lazy? <laughs> well, God always helps us if we do a little work ourselves. Pope Pius XII declared Catherine Labore to be a saint, and when her tomb was open, her body was found to be incorrupt. Wow, that sometimes happens with saints, doesn't it? Right. Her aim in life had always been not to attract attention so that all the glory would be God's. Even today, many people know about the Miraculous Medal, but very few know about the life and work of St. Catherine Labore. Yes, that's true. Holy Mother, from today I promise to be a good Catholic, always to obey my parents, to study hard, and to set a good example to my friends. I also ask your intercession with your Son, Jesus Christ, for the same things my parents ask for. Amen.